What's the most dick thing a celebrity has ever done to you? I stood out in the blistering cold with my little brother Matthew to get an autograph from Eminem, and that motherfucker walked right past us. I used to work construction with my dad when I was a young boy. Nothing serious, bend rubber and smooth concrete, about as much as a 9 year old can do. Anyway, we were one of many subcontractors working on the Scientology Celebrity Center. Asterisk one day, my dad sees a brown limousine pull up, right? Brown, and says that's Tom Cruise. Here, go get his autograph, and handed me his little pocket notebook, encrusted in dirt and concrete, and a blue big pen. I didn't know much about Tom Cruise, or anyone, really, but I knew he was a movie star, the first I'd ever meet. I was super excited. I left the dirt, and went up to the walkway, and watched Tom Cruise approach. When he got close, I held out the notebook and pen with a big stupid grin on my face. All kids have big stupid grins. Why would I be any different? Tom. He reached out his hand, put it in my face, and said move, kid, and continued into the church. I went back to my father. Did you get it? No. No daddy, I didn't get the autograph, and celebrities are assholes. I was on the dressing room doors of security in the Zero to Arena in London whilst KISS was playing their last show. Gene Simmons reported me to my supervisor because I had a small rip in my shirt and I got sent home with no pay for the day after already being there for 5 hours. Not me but my mum. In like the mid 80s. My mum worked at a cafe in a train station. One day a fairly well known TV presenter, the crowd force guy that wasn't Titch Marsh, passed though and sat by the window. He was a pretty attractive guy so a lot of the young girls who came through were coming in and asking for autographs. After almost an hour the guy gestures towards my mum and points at his coffee. My mum was like 7 months pregnant at the time and was restocking the bakery. She tells him she'll be a second, he just scoffs at her, and goes back to his paper. When she comes over she apologizes, and then pours his drink. Then this happens. Sorry again can I get you anything whilst I'm up? Peace and quiet maybe? I would've thought you'd be used to girls falling at your feet well at the places I go there's usually someone to stop them well I can try, and pull them off but well the least you could do, is hire some decent staff sorry, well I mean it's not exactly quick service and surely you should at least door staff, to get rid of those cows referring to the girls my mum works with, look I'm a heavily pregnant waitress there's not a lot I can do well you could at least kick them out it's not difficult excuse me, is this seriously the type of people my taxes go on? I'm sorry but there's not a lot I can do well what do you expect me to do? Maybe don't sit right in the window waving your hair like some pretty twat and giving googly eyes at every poor mug who walks past? Well I think you're clearly too hormonal to be in any kind of work and I think you're an egotistical prick you realize someone like me could easily have you fired? I'd be amazed if you managed to lift a pretty little finger to do its wares at her and the checkout girls he leaves without paying. My mum is still mad about it, and refuses to watch anything with him in. She also refers to him as pretty boy. It's been like 30 years. I was on the crew for my friend's band at Milwaukee Summerfest. I was unloading equipment from the trailer and the singer from Miklabak was on one of the pocket bike mono motorcycles. He kept zipping by me, only a few inches from hitting me as I was carrying important equipment. I think the Nickelback hate is weak and cliche, but I legitimately hate him. I've told this story before. I live in Los Angeles, and I was on a coffee date with a really cute girl I'd been wanting to go out with for a while. It was our first date. I see BJ Novak, from the office, at a nearby table and the girl kept looking over at him. Finally as we were paying the bill, she asks him I'm sorry, do I know you? Did we go to high school together? I'm kind of groaning to myself, knowing he's on a hit TV show and that's how she knows him. But then he just plays stupid. I don't know, maybe, what's your name? Where are you from? Are you on Facebook? ETC, etc. Meanwhile, I'm livid because he's clearly hitting on her right in front of me. So he gets her Facebook info and we leave. I never heard from her again. No idea if they ever dated, but I 100% guarantee he contacted her. Fucking douche. Amanda Palmer told my ex's daughter that she wasn't cute enough or talented enough to be famous, all because she was irritated during a meet and greet. I love my ex's kid to this day, as though she were my own. 
and thus will never fucking end my grudge against that fake edge of brown bitch. Watching Espen got me thinking about this. About 2002-2001 I was living in Hilton Head, and if you have ever lived there, or visited you have heard the joke why, can't you get a BJ in Ohio? Because all the cocksuckers are in Hilton Head. Apparently this is the beach of choice for people from Ohio. So my GF, at the time, lived with 4 other girls, and one of her roommates was probably one of the most gorgeous women I've ever seen. So the hot roommate called me one day, and said that she met some dude that works at Espen, and I should come meet them at a bar. I get there, and it's Kirk Herb Street and 4 of his buddies and my GF and her 4 roomies and everyone pairs off, but leaving one of his buddies without a girl, so they were being passive aggressive towards me, not rude or anything but just snide. We all hung out for a while and we were doing tons of shots and he ended up leaving with the girl, which is another story all itself, and his buddies all leave as well leaving me and my GF. I go to close my tab, and it's about $500 where they all had put everything on my tab and apparently buying drinks for random people at the bar as well. I was furious when I got the bill and asked why he thought I was picking everyone up. He said they came to the bar and kept saying we are with Crash, he's got this round, and kept bringing rounds to our table. I did go to the bar for a few rounds myself, and I was a regular, so he only charged me for about $150 of it. Every time I see that motherfucker I think about that. I'm a distant relative of the Marriott family. Yes, the Marriott family. My sister was performing at the Kennedy Center in DC and my grandmother calls up this relative and asks for a favor. She ends up getting booked in the presidential suite at the JW Marriott. We arrived a few hours after check-in time to help my grandma get her stuff to this room and the desk people saw our reservation and immediately blushed. They got very apologetic, very fast and we had no idea what was going on. Pretty soon the general manager comes out and escorts us to this fancy VIP lounge area and explains that the previous occupant of the suite had not left yet, even though it was hours past. He then told us he was sending security to escort this person out. We tried to play it cool and act like we thought a rich person might normally act, but we all come from not very much money and we couldn't believe any of this was happening to us. About 15 to 20 minutes later we hear a commotion in the lobby and see two security guys escorting out this late guest, who was not happy at all. We jumped up to see who it was, and it was Richard Jair. Unfortunately, no Julia Roberts anywhere. Not me but my aunt. My aunt was a pediatrics nurse in Southern California and the father of one of her patients was Keith David. He's been in a ton of shit. I remember him as the general in Armageddon. He brought her in for annual checkup and needed his info for paperwork. When she asked for his name, he responded without looking at her I'm just the father. She was taken aback by the response and said come again. He gave the same response. My aunt has two unique talents, spotting actors and naming every movie they have been, but maybe not the actor's name, hey, it's that guy, and not giving two fucks about people's attitudes, she was a former La County Sheriff, anyway, she said look dude, I know you're an actor, I know you're kinda famous, this was in 1999, but I'm not looking for an autograph, I need your info to fill out paperwork for your daughter, you know, the reason you're here. So this was a dick move, but otherwise the person in question is really nice. Back in 2005 I shy was a pastry chef at a restaurant named Best Beast Row. It was owned by Sandra Bullock. She was really cool to her staff, spent a grip on an open bar at nightclub she rented out for our Christmas party. Always had us call her Sandy instead of Milliseconds Bullock. Very approachable and nice all around. Except for this one incident. I'd like to think it was a crossed wire or something. But anyway on the two incident, when I joined the team there I had to contribute a few recipes. One of the recipes was for a lemon tart, nothing fancy but it was good. Anyway one night I'm at home watching the daily show with my girlfriend and Sandra is one of the guests. John Stewart starts asking her to plug the restaurant. After some banter he asks her what her favorite dish is. She starts to say that there is this fantastic lemon tart. I'm standing up in the living room at this point grinning with pride at my girlfriend. Then Sandra proceeds to tell Jon Stewart that the recipe has been in her family for generations. I was pissed off to say the least. I go into work the next day prepared to make a stink and start to complain to my head chef about it. 
he just laughed and told me to drink a cup of cement and toughen up princess. That it was the name of the game cooking for restaurants that you don't own. Of course he was right, years of cooking later, and I was the one telling people to get on with it. Still though, why Sandy? Why? I saw Ryan Gosling at a grocery store in Los Angeles yesterday. I told him how cool it was to meet him in person, but I didn't want to be a douche and bother him and ask him for photos or anything. He said, oh, like you're doing now? I was taken aback, and all I could say was ha, huh. but he kept cutting me off and going ha, huh, ha, huh, ha, huh, and closing his hand shut in front of my face. I walked away, and continued with my shopping, and I heard him chuckle as I walked off. When I came to pay for my stuff up front I saw him trying to walk out the doors with like 15 milky ways in his hands without paying. The girl at the counter was very nice about it and professional, and was like sir, you need to pay for those first. At first he kept pretending to be tired and not hear her, but eventually turned back around and brought them to the counter. When she took one of the bars and started scanning it multiple times, he stopped her and told her to scan them each individually to prevent any electrical interference and then turned around and winked at me. I don't even think that's a word. After she scanned each bar and put them in a bag and started to say the price, he kept interrupting her by yawning really loudly. <laughs> Dean Sanders took up half my section for 2 hours and left me a 10% tip. He also wouldn't talk to me, he talked through one of his goons. Also turned down an autograph from a younger, probably middle school, kid, saying I don't have time for that. Fuck that guy, glad his school's failed. Poopy Goldberg once roughly pushed me out of the way in a huff somewhere in Manhattan in 2009. I can't remember what neighborhood it was, I remember it was late, and we were all exhausted, and walking to the subway, to take back to where our hotel was. It was my last year of high school, and I was on a tour of the island with my art class. 